chapter 4. I'll go back to Colossians, but I want to do this for a week or two. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, and, and we'll start at verse 1. Hope everybody's having a, a good week. And if you're not, then I hope it will be bad. I hope it'll be bad. And we had a good, good day Sunday, and uh, good service, good fellowship. So glad to see that. And but I'm glad to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. Just uh, encouraged by the Spirit of God about the things that God wants to do. He will do them. He's just waiting on us to be obedient. And a lot of that starts with prayer. And it starts with an understanding of the situation. It was said of the sons of Issachar that they, they were able to discern the times and they knew what to do. So we need to have that same spirit. We need to be able to see what's going on, but really see what's going on. Anybody know what I'm talking about when I say really see what's going on? In other words, see behind the scenes? Yeah. Because, you know, we've said it before, and you, <clears throat> and you all have heard me say it, and you agree with it, that what we actually see is not what reality actually is. What is going on behind the scenes is what is reality. So tonight I want to teach on a subject called discerning the spirits. I've, I've taught on it before, but I feel like this is something <clears throat> that I need to teach on on a regular basis uh, because it's much needed. So looking at John, and we'll be taking prayer requests, and uh, so if you got one, you can let David know and and then at the end of the service, we will pray. But 1 John 4, verse 1 says, Beloved. When you see beloved right there, that means he's talking to the church. Talking to uh, the beloved of Jesus Christ. Simply says, do not believe every spirit. So, when we see that, he says every spirit, that kind of lets me know that there's a lot of spirits out there. Sometimes in our modern day Christian theology, the only spirit we talk about is Holy Spirit. We don't talk about Him in the right way. We don't talk about Him too much. But there are spirits out there. He said, but test the spirits. So there, is, there it is again. To see whether they are from God. So that lets us know that there are spirits out there. Any spirit other than Holy Spirit is, a, is not from God. Okay? He said, For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So that would tell me that I need to be testing the spirits of people who are standing up in the name of Jesus and preaching and prophesying. Right? Mm -hmm. We need to do that. We need to be careful. Because everybody that says, Lord, Lord, Jesus said, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven because they hadn't come near to Jesus Christ. They're just coming in his name. He said, by this you'll know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist which you heard was coming. And look at what he said. Now this is 2,000 years ago and now is in the world already. Everybody is looking for the Antichrist. The Antichrist. Reckon where he's going to come from. Who's he going to be? What's he going to look like? doesn't matter. The spirit of Antichrist is already at work in the world doing the deception. The embodiment of that is what we would call the Antichrist, but... Sometimes even that will cause us to get distracted mm -hmm. and not look at the things that are going on. So again, I need to teach on this because this scripture, and it addresses 
the, with a warning. And the warning is, do not believe every spirit. But test them. But test them. And that's what I want to talk about. Test the spirit. Discern the spirit. I believe that this needs to be covered, like I said, regularly. And it, <clears throat> but it has to be with the proper emphasis and the proper balance. Okay? There's a tendency for a fascination with this type of stuff to occur. And when you do that, you will spend too much time focusing on evil spirits rather than on the Holy Spirit. I, I, years ago, I was teaching on something that was, you know, talking about the spirits and different things in the world. And I had somebody, you know, you know people would say, man, that's so interesting. But the Holy Spirit stopped me, Ronnie. He said, he said, don't teach them about that. He said, teach them about me. They need to know more about me than they need to know all this other stuff. So you can spend too much time talking about evil spirits. And in turn, when you do that, you will attach more power to the enemy than, than really than he has. Because that's what happens. And I see it all the time. I've seen it in the last couple of days on social media. People see certain things and they say, oh, you better get ready. This is about to happen and that's about to happen. Well, I don't know if it is or not, but I'm ready already. I'm already. I'm ready right now. I ain't got to do anything else. So it will distract us, though, if we're not careful, from our primary mission and focus, and that's to tell other people about the love of Jesus Christ, to love one another, to do the works of God on this earth. And on the other hand, there, you can go the other extreme and not teach on spiritual matters at all. And you'll do it to the point that the reality of evil spirits are dismissed and are totally ignored. So you got to find a balance. And I'm going to give you several things, uh, just little bullet points on these things that we need to study. Number one, evil is real. Evil spirits are real. The world that we live in is controlled by the unseen spiritual world. That's what really matters. That's what's really happening. We need to know it, and we need to understand it. Number two, Satan is not as powerful as God. He has, Satan has been defeated. We have the power to discern the spirits, all spirits. If not, John wouldn't have said, test the spirits. Jesus, and you can go to Mark 16 and you'll find this. Jesus has given us authority over all spirits, over all evil spirits, and because he has authority over everything. Because he has authority. What he, he received and he took and he took back he took authority. He has given it to us. Amen? So we just need to understand that. So here's some things that we see in Scripture. Just kind of balance everything out to say we know that there are evil spirits. Uh, besides Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, you know, he, he lays it all out. But here's some besides that. In Leviticus 19.31, in the Old Testament... It says, do not turn to mediums or necromancers. That's people who, who consult with the dead, talk to the dead, have a fascination with the dead. It says, do not seek them out, and so make yourself unclean by them. And he said, I am the Lord your God. In Matthew 8, Jesus ministered. It said, that evening, in verse 16, they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, See that? And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. That's in Jesus' ministry. In the apostles' ministry. In Acts 16. Verse 16. As we were going to place to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune-telling. They cast that spirit out, and that got them thrown in the Philippian jail. 
in Acts 8 verse 7 it said uh, as the apostles were working the ministry it said for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and at that time even Simon the sorcerer the magician said it says that he received Christ and was baptized later on we can see maybe that wasn't so true you know I was thinking about that this morning uh, I was thinking about this fact something that we have always said and as we cause you always get this question right you ever taught on this subject Ronnie you ever get this question people say can a Christian be possessed by the devil yeah. have you ever had that question and a lot of people have and I always get that question and though so we say no other if they're a Christian absolutely not cause the spirit greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world and and you can't have two spirits in there you can't have a Holy Spirit and a demonic spirit but a lot of times we'll say well they're demonically oppressed but I'm not sure that that is totally true because sometimes I think they could be like Simon the sorcerer he confessed Jesus but he really wasn't because he tried to buy it he tried to buy the gifts of the spirit so well, I don't know I don't believe a Christian can be can be demon possessed absolutely that's impossible if you're a true Christian that is impossible but if you are manifesting evil spirits I got a question whether the first part is true are you a Christian where you really ever say you understand what I'm saying because you cannot be demon possessed if you're a Christian so I just want to throw that in there I was thinking about that this morning in Romans so number one I want to show you what examples from the spirit uh, of the demonic spirits in the scripture number two I want to show you something very important for our day and time and and this is what it is what whatever you yield to will have dominion over you everybody knows what yield means if you go in another country they uh, you see our sign says yield Ronnie I was in one country one time it didn't say yield but it said give way that's what yield means that means you give way to it so Romans 6 16 says do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves you are the slaves of the one whom you obey either of sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness so if you yield yourself if you give way to these spirits they can they can slowly take dominion over you they can change the way you think they can change the way you walk in your Christian faith and they can eventually move you out of your Christian faith I know what I I know that this is true because that's what the scripture says there is a perverse spirit that is very strong right now matter of fact it has been for a long time and it has been historically that perverse spirit takes the form of anything that is perverted you, you know and, and sexual perversion all kind of perversion and it, it is a very strong spirit Matt, Matthew 6 24 says you cannot serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve God and money you cannot you cannot serve two spirits okay that's why it's important for us to test the spirits because this influence can be very subtle of these demonic spirits and especially now this perverse spirit and it can be dangerously deceptive okay that's why media companies included 
in all of their media, right? They include it in television shows. They include it in kids' shows. They include it in commercials. They did a started years ago. It was very subtle. And, very, and they've just been increasing it and increasing it. You say, well, it don't affect me. It can affect somebody who's weak in the faith. It can. Where they will look at it and say, that's normal. But it's not. It's perverse. Even, even to now what we see, uh, it, because it was subtle, but now it's in your face, right? Now it's in your face. Now we give you a whole month flying the flag. Now, if you say anything wrong with it, you're the one that's wrong. You can lose your job. You can, a lot of things can happen to you now because it now has went from, from being subtle to being out in your face. And it's tearing denominations apart. I talked about that the other week. It's ripping them apart because they, some of the great historical Denominations are just being ripped to shreds over these perverse issues. It's a strong spirit. That's what we have got to be able to discern the spirit. And you can be watching your favorite show and it just keep coming into your eyes and your eyes and your eyes where eventually you either just be okay with it or you'll accept it. So you have to be able, be able to discern the spirit it's easy to discern them now if you believe the word of God so we got to know that they exist and we have to never dismiss them because by becoming dismissive we can become oblivious to the influence that they have in our life see see it's just getting out there now the producers and the People who run these media companies have, it's, it's just come out, you know, we're going to put these type characters in every one of our shows. It's, if we're going to put them in your school, talking to your children. And if you say anything about it, we're going to send the FBI down there and put you on a list. Y'all think I'm lying? Am I lying? No, they're doing that right now. The Justice Department put a whole bunch of people on a terror list because they stood up in a school board meeting and said something about transgender. They on a terror watch list now. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> You've got to discern the spirits. And you can. Okay? 1 Corinthians 12 gives us the list of all the gifts of the Spirit in there. And he says in verse 10, to another the work of the miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits. To, and, the, and the King James says discerning of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues. Listen, in Acts chapter 5 verse 3, Ananias and Sapphira were in the church, leaders in the church. But Peter said to Ananias in verse 3, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the, of the land? He walked in. Now, nobody told Peter. Nobody told him, hey, Ananias, you know, did. Nobody. The Holy Spirit, he, he, he discerned that there was a wrong spirit in Ananias. And you can do the same thing. If you couldn't do it, then John wouldn't tell you to do it. John wouldn't tell us to do something we couldn't do. He said, test the spirits. Don't believe the spirits, but test them. So he wouldn't tell us something we couldn't do. That's what this means, to test the spirit, discern the spirit. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you get a check in your spirit as a child of God, you know what I'm talking about when I say check? Please do not ignore it. You might have to stand up and walk out of a movie theater. And that's embarrassing. 
but don't ignore it. You might have to say something or not say something. You may, you may have to not choose to participate, maybe even in a family activity. You see what I'm saying? Don't ignore it. If you see a representation of, of, of any kind of spirit in a good light or, or bad light, doesn't matter, it's not Holy Spirit. You can see a representation of a spirit in, in media, in a horoscope, in any kind of thing like that. It's not of Holy Spirit. It is not Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of Antichrist. And it's important, again, I'll re repeat this, important to understand an acknowledgement of Christ is not a confession that he is Lord. The devils believe and they tremble. So if you give power to anything, the result can be its influence taking a place in your life that it shouldn't have. And if that happens, you start getting on sinking sand. There's a lot at stake. But again, I will say this, and I'm going I'm to close. You've got power over evil spirits. I pray it a lot, guys. I, I pray that a lot. A lot of times when I'm going somewhere I, I, that I don't know, and I don't care where it's at. It can, it can be someplace that's seemingly good. I pray, Father, protect me. Let me know what's right and wrong. Help me. Let your spirit rest in me, Lord. Don't let me connect myself with anything that is not pleasing to you, okay? Because Luke 10, 18, and 19 said, I saw faith. Lord Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold. I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall hurt you. Nothing by any means shall harm you. So you have power. Jesus said, I've given it. He gave it to his disciples. He's given it to us. Mark 16, verse 17. I mentioned this a while ago. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Romans 8, verse 37. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You have authority over every spirit. Ephesians 6.10 said, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, pulling down strongholds. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We have a power. I think I told somebody Sunday morning. I said, I'm not scared of, of uh, I don't have a problem with these uh, demonic spirits because I got authority over that. And I do. And you do too. But we need to be able to distinguish between right and wrong. He will come as an angel of light. Satan will. But you'll be able to pick him out real quick. 
I remember one of the things that we learned to do when we... See, I, I believe... One reason I believe Holy Spirit is having me to teach on this now is we, we're going to see more direct manifestations of the demonic spirits in this nation, in this country than we ever have before. And my pastor used to say, the reason that we don't see them here now is because we medicate them. But I believe we're about to see them. And you, you, need, to, you need to know this. I mean, the, when I was overseas, uh, you know, you, you could talk to somebody. And, then, and, man, I've seen some things, especially in Africa and in India too, but uh, I've seen some things. But if you, if, 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 and they'll go back and forth. They can be saying praise the Lord, and then all of a sudden they'll manifest something else because they can't help it. When they get in the presence of the Holy Spirit, they, they, they just come out. This, and you know real quick that. And all you had to do is just say, you could say this, are you saved? Yes, I am. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord. They wouldn't do that. They'll say all day long, I'm a Christian, praise the Lord. You say, okay, confess Jesus Christ as Lord. But nothing happened. Because they can't. They can't. So you, you're going to see more of it. Am I saying that for you to be fearful? Lord, no. You ought to be rejoicing. you got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. But I am saying... Test the spirit. Don't believe every prophet. Don't believe everything that comes packaged in glitter and glamour and lights. They're supposed to be good for you. You better check it. And if you get that check in your spirit, you better woe up. Will you hand me that? Baby? Hand that to Jimmy Hill. Hand it to me. We'll take a prayer request. Better back it up. Amen? But everybody say this. Say, we have. We have power, power. Over, the devil. over the devil. You do. Amen. Let me give you some prayer.